Sorry, I've done the back first. Can the leukemia see Yep. Right. Um, yes, the, the short answer is yes, you can. Um, so, do you know whether you've got a large cell or small cell lymphoma? No. It's no. Chronic, chronic, is it? Okay. So, um, so the, the leukemia can change the pattern such that it accumulates mainly in the lymph glands rather than in the blood and in the bone marrow. And if that happens, and you, um, it's almost more like a lymphoma type pattern um, than the leukemia, but it's the same disease. So for example, there's a cousin of CLL called small lymphocytic lymphoma, which for all intents and purposes is the same disease. The genetics is the same, the response to treatment is the same, the long-term survival is the same, everything is the same. But it tends to present in swollen glands, and when you check the blood, sometimes there's no disease in the blood at all, unlike CLL, where there's a lot of disease in the blood. And it's really the same cells, but just slightly different stickiness. So some cells, some CLL just start to stick to lymph glands more than others, and other types start to circulate in the blood. But it's the same disease, um, and um, it gets treated in the same way. So probably in your case, if you have a chronic so lymphoma, that's probably what they meant is that, you know, it's changed the pattern a bit, it's less, there's less disease in the blood, there's more in the glands, but it's the same disease. There is a more sinister version um, called a rictus or large cell transformation. And that's when the leukemia has made enough genetic mistakes that it starts to grow really quickly in a really aggressive manner. And they form a large cell lymphoma, large, ugly, primitive cells. Um, that's actually quite a difficult condition to treat if that happens. Uh, it tends to happen after having had leukemia for many, many years. It tends to happen after you've had a lot of chemotherapy because every time we give chemotherapy, we, we damage the leukemia um, and we kill off some. But the ones that survive often develop new genetic changes and sometimes we encourage more sinister genes to come out, which is part of the reason why we're not so keen on giving chemotherapy without a good reason to because sometimes you can make the cancer worse so it can cause a second cancer. Yes, sir. Why is it that doctors uh, don't tell you what CLL is? I had to find out from my sister. She's a trained nurse. Right. In fact, the doctors uh, said you haven't got leukemia. All right. Yeah. Uh, is, is it because of uh, uh, stress or whatever? Um, uh, uh, CLL of all the leukemias is considered sort of a fairly benign sort of disease because it takes such a long time to, to, to kill people, if it does. Um, like I said, if you're very young, you know, it will eventually catch up with you at some point. But when you're older, you know, other things start to come into medicine, you know, Alzheimer's, diabetes. And I guess a, a lot of doctors are under the impression that, well, you know, look, I don't want to worry the patient. Um, it's not a leukemia in the same way that you see, you know, young kids lose their hair, die quickly. You know, this is something that's going to take years and years to cause problems. Um, that's probably the motivation that they thought that in the context of other issues that you know they probably don't want to worry you with a diagnosis like leukemia uh, and really you know it's, it's very different from acute fast growing nasty leukemia it's still nasty but it grows much slower question from the back Yes. Um, or, or the few leukemia cells, I'm not sure which, but modifying them mm -hmm. so that they could put them back into the person to attack the yes. cells. So uh, the, the, the question is about a, a new technique where you take out the patient's um, cells and modify them and put them back in. That's what we call a chimeric antigen receptor T cell receptor, um, T cell therapy. So T cells are the immune cells in your body which attack leukemia and infection and other things. So there's a technique now where we're taking, um, not available in New Zealand or Australia, sadly, um, but there's a technique where we're developing, where we're getting the normal immune cells from a patient's body, um, and we strip it of the usual things, and we stick in a receptor, uh, we stick in a bit that recognizes leukemia. So in a way, we're trying to force your immune, your immune cells to recognize the leukemia. 
um, and then we put it back in into the body. Now the first generations did really badly. Um, like the, the cells circulated for about 12 hours and just died. Um, then the second generation came along and they survived for a bit longer. And now we've got third generation cells, which uh, sometimes can survive for several weeks to months. And in fact, there's been a case report in New England where um, a third generation uh, cell treatment actually sent a patient into a very long remission um, afterwards. So this is treatment that is evolving, that's working. Um, it's a treatment that is being done, there's five centers in the world that's working on that right now. It's really quite embryonic, um, but it, it looks promising. And I think that's one of the things that we're looking forward to in the future, that we can actually have um, either get your own cells or even better, have off the shelf cells, have like some shelves that, cells that we made already that we can use on you without having to get your own cells out. Um, and that's a, one of the grills. I mean, it, one of my priorities at Peter Mac is in fact to try and get um, some chimeric antigen receptor technology into the place. Um, so I'll, um, it, it, we already have some of that capaci capacity in other cancers, um, but we need to, you know, uh, there's a long developing in the program. It's not something that we can get on the shelf straight away. Yes, sir. Do you think then that uh, having uh, this going out in the sun as a young person yes. um, is causing uh, you to have, say, um, problems that turn into leukemia? No. 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 Um, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's just that if you go out in the sun as a young person, you're more likely to get skin cancer when you're older. Mm. Um, and to be fair, um, CFL many affects, well, in many affects the, the white population, people with pale skin. Um, some Afri African American hardly ever happens in Chinese, so I have the distinct um, distinction of working in disease that I'm immune to. <laughs> a lot of hematologists die of own disease. I'm very unlikely to die of CLL. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's more to do with just the racial, the racial profile. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing? So how many of you, are, yes, yes. You last for chemotherapy. Yes. With antibodies. Yes. What's the advantage? Okay, so the advantage is that it's much more potent in killing off CLL. So, um, for example, if you get the, the antibody, the chemotherapy of the antibody together, um, most people would be in remission for an average or about five to seven years. So about five to seven years before the leukemia comes back. Um, this is on average, okay? Some people get really lucky, some people get really unlucky. Um, as opposed to, let's say, tablets, where we would expect the leukemia to come back in about six months or 12 months. So, um, you know, in a very young person, sometimes some people have young kids, they have a busy job, um, they have, you know, in the prime of their life, we give them the bigger therapy because we want them to take the next five years and go back to their life, work, get up, watch the kids grow up and do other things before having to come back for more treatment. But that chemotherapy does have more side effects. It's certainly much more likely to cause infection um, and it can put a lot more strain on the bone marrow. So it, it, sometimes in an older person, we need to be a bit careful um, that we are not giving them therapy that's unnecessarily poisonous. Yes, down the back, sir. Uh, you know that, yes? Uh, you were saying that long-term chemotherapy yes. can cause... Um, Cancers? It's not long term. I mean, some people can get just the one, the one what we call cause of chemotherapy, which means one lot. Typically, oh, sorry, the question is how long uh, chemotherapy do you get before you get cancers? Um, when you have, uh, certainly the more chemotherapy you get, the higher the risk of you getting a second cancer, in particular, uh, a cancer of your bone marrow because the bone marrow cells has been damaged. Um, and that can happen as quickly as if you're unlucky as just the one cause of chemotherapy. You know, it's four to six months of chemotherapy, and then some years later you get another cancer. Um, it's just luck. Certainly, you know, the more you have, the more likely you are to get it. The overall risk is probably pretty low. It's probably in the order of about five or 10% in the very long run, no matter how many treatment you get. Um, 
but certainly if you get maybe just the one treatment, you're more in the order of about three or five percent. If you've had six, you're more in the order of about eight to ten percent risk. Herbs, herbs, herbs. Um, you won't think herbs, that's fine. I don't think any of them work. Um, but you won't think herbs and makes you feel better, that's fine. Um, but um, for God's sake, if you're going to get chemotherapy, tell your doctors about your herbs, okay? Because some of your herbs will change the way your body handles the drugs. Some of them make the chemotherapy more poisonous. Some may make the chemotherapy less poisonous. St. John's wort is a notable example. So, for, you know, if you do, best thing is that you just not take it um, in chemotherapy. Uh, but if you do take it, please tell the doctor that you're on it. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. What effect does uh, taking echinacea or fish oil have on your immune system? Um, probably, the question is whether, what effect does taking echinacea or fish oil have on your immune system? Probably nothing, no effect. Um, our immune system evolved over 5,000 years to fight malaria, TB, all sorts of nasty infection without the help of fish oil or echinacea. And it works perfectly fine just the way it is. So, what vitamin C, does that help? Oh, does vitamin C help? No, no uh, it does not. In one of the very sad truths is that one of the big pioneers of vitamin C happens to be a very famous scientist who discovered the DNA. Um, but no, vitamin C doesn't help at all. What about uh, alkalizing the body? Does that make any difference to CLL? Uh, alkalizing the body does not make any difference to your leukemia at all. Your, your immune system functions best when you're happy on a balanced diet and of good exercise. You know, if your immune system functions better by alkalizing, humans will, have, will be more alkaline than we are now. The acupuncture. Help? Helps or, you know. Does acupuncture help? Probably not. Um, probably not. It might make you feel better but it'd be very unlikely to help your leukemia. Uh, remember, remember acupuncture is from China and CLL is really rare in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Almost unheard of. <laughs> yes, ma'am? Oh, God. Okay, I, I'm gonna get in trouble now. Uh, um, Is that right? Yeah, look, um, uh, it, it, it's a variable definition. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 I, I'm young enough that it's not a problem, but for my older colleagues, um, the definition of older shifts up year by year as they get older. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, 65 to 70 is typically where we start to think about patients as being a bit older. Um, but of course, you've got people in the 70s who skydive and scuba dive and run marathons and that's and then you've got people in the 60s who've smoked too much and can't do anything so but it, around 65 to 70 is where we start to think of people as you know starting to become a bit older and start looking a bit closer about how all the other organs work but yeah it depends on the on what we call the physiological fitness so how fit you are as a person you know you're really healthy you've never had a problem before you you've run marathons and you're very fit that thing yeah